Hey, what up guys? Welcome back to Apple Tech Talk. So I'm here in Yeosu, South Korea. Uh, it's a small city near the southern tip of the peninsula and it's honestly really crazy here. It's really great and it's really different from Seoul. So um, for anyone out there who's a tourist, this area is not a huge uh, touristy area. So if you're ever thinking about coming to Korea, you might want to consider coming here. It's really nice. Uh, you got Odongdo Island in the background. Um, it's a really nice area here and I'm only here for a few days but I thought while I'm here I should make a video um, and so this video is actually going to be really interesting I'm going to be discussing huge leaks that have emerged spanning Apple future Apple products for the rest of 2019 and also part of 2020 so without any further ado let's get into the video there's a lot to cover today there's been a lot of rumors and leaks floating around the internet about the upcoming iPhones for example the new Apple car that was unveiled recently, the 2019 Apple Watch, and possibly even a 16-inch MacBook Pro. Today I'm here to tell you every single future Apple product to be released according to leaks and rumors for the rest of this year and part of next year. Um, because we know that much about these products that we, we can say with pretty much full certainty or near full certainty that these products will come out at this time and it will contain these certain features. Of course, we don't know everything, but for certain products, we know quite a lot. So let me know in the comment section below if you want me to do dedicated videos on any of these products. I certainly will for some of them, um, but for some other ones, if you feel that uh, you want a full rumors roundup on this, the product, let me know in the comment section below and then I'll definitely make a video on that. So it starts with the Apple card. Uh, you can watch my video on that right there. I made a video on the Apple Card after it was announced by Apple. It is probably going to come out later in the fall. According to Apple, it is going to be sort of like a revolutionary uh, look at the credit card and it's got a lot of really cool rewards programs, a lot of really unique features that Apple, only Apple will, is able to do and you can watch my video to understand the full rundown of what Apple Card is. Um, there's going to be a couple things that will be answered in the next few months once Apple releases Apple Card. There's a couple little, little nitty-gritty technical details that we don't quite know yet, but Apple Card is coming out by the end of this year, definitely sometime in the fall. My personal guess is after, right after the September keynote. And then we have the 2019 iPhones, which of course is definitely happening this year. Um, we basically know everything about these phones at this point as we do with every year's iPhones. I will definitely be making a dedicated video uh, covering all the rumor roundup, so I'm not gonna spend too long talking about it in this video. I want this video to cover a lot of Apple products, so um, I'm not gonna spend a huge amount of time on the iPhones. Plus, I am planning on buying one when it comes out in the fall, as I have an iPhone 6S as my daily driver. It's about time to upgrade. So some of the main features that are making headlines are the tri-lens camera setup as opposed to the dual lens camera setup. There's not really any other main uh, mainstream smartphone camera on the market currently with a tri-lens camera that I'm aware of. You've got three models um, of the iPhone this year, one with an LCD panel and two with OLED panels. Uh, you have a 12 megapixel selfie camera up from a seven megapixel one. You have new Apple A13 custom made chips an enhanced battery capacity, possibly the biggest battery capacity Apple is yet to offer, and also reverse wireless charging, which was one of the main features of the Galaxy S10. You also will get Face ID Gen 3, and probably an ultra-wide lens and 3x optical zoom, not digital zoom, so it won't lose any image quality if you zoom in. And those are just some of the main features. There's a lot more coming. But overall, I'd say it's not the most exciting uh, iPhone to debut. Um, it's definitely one of those smaller S like upgrades, sort of like last year's iPhones. I hope it's not as disappointing as last year's, but Apple definitely realized by the press trash talking it and also cu customers saying things about last year's iPhones that they needed to take a step up and they need to make a little bit more changes uh, this year. So hopefully they'll do that. I'm fingers crossed because I really, really want a good phone this year. Okay, I spent way too long on that. I'm I'm gonna make a video soon on that anyway. So also we have the Apple Watch Series 5 coming. Let me know if you want a dedicated video, video on this. I'm currently not planning on making one, but it could definitely be an interesting video. Um, I don't know too much about what the Apple Watch Series 5 is gonna offer. I'd say not a new redesign because the Apple Watch Series 4 had a new redesign that was actually really critically acclaimed to Apple 
probably wait another two or three years before refreshing the design again. The Apple Watch Series 5 will definitely have specs, bumps, um, and probably some you know, newer technologies, but nothing crazy. I, I see this more being an S upgrade and the Apple Watch Series 5 and it will ship with watch OS 6. Also, Apple TV Plus will be released in the fall, um, which is very exciting. There's a bunch of new shows coming out on that. Watch my video on that right there. I cover every single show that is going to be on Apple TV Plus. It's basically Apple's take on exclusive TV programming. It's, it's really quite amazing what they've managed to achieve with the big names from Hollywood and other places. Uh, it's a lot of celebrities in that. Next, we will have iOS 13, macOS Catalina, iPadOS, tvOS 13, and watchOS 6 debuting um, on their respective devices. And this will definitely happen in the fall, I can say with 100% certainty. They will uh, probably release it after the September keynote as well. I will make a video very soon on iOS 13 and macOS Catalina and possibly watchOS 6, although I'm not sure I'd be able to install the beta on it. Um, I do have access to an Apple Watch, but it's not mine, so I would have to ask the owner. Um, we also have Apple Arcade that will be released, which you can watch my video on that right there. I actually compared it to a lot of other uh, equivalent competitors in the market. It's a video game streaming service and again it's probably going to come out in September after the September keynote. There's going to be a lot of stuff released after the September keynote. Part of what WWDC this year was criticized for, which it happened back in June, was that Apple barely made any announcements that were going to be unveiled and released around that time. They've sort of announced a lot of stuff at WWDC, but it's actually all coming in the fall. Next, the Mac Pro. It has been announced at WWDC this year, and the release is probably gonna be in September or possibly later in the fall. I don't see this happening in 2020. It's gonna happen sometime in 2019. Maybe December, like the uh, previous generation Mac Pro that came out in December of 2013. We'll see, but either way, it will definitely be by the holiday season. There's huge design and spec bumps in the product, and you can go and watch my video right there when I talked about the Mac Pro and actually compared it to the iMac Pro, which is sort of another Pro uh, device that Apple has made and sort of comparing the two and seeing what really the difference is at all. Also shipping alongside the Mac Pro will be the Apple Pro Display XDR, which is Apple's very expensive take on um, a pro level display and that will definitely ship alongside the Mac Pro. Uh, it should not ship any later. So, so far that's pretty much everything we know that will come out for sure and we know the timetable for that so far, but there's a lot more else that will be coming. So now for more speculative rumors on 2019 slash 2020 rumored products. So there's a rumored Apple TV dongle to compete with smaller products like Google Chromecast and Amazon Fire TV Stick. And a it's basically gonna be a cheaper, more compact version of Apple TV with a limited feature set. It's meant to promote Apple TV Plus, not really meant to be like a huge, big hit device, but I think it might, might end up working if Apple is going to sort of position the Apple TV at several different price points. I can see that being really effective. We also have a cheaper HomePod that is set to come out to compete with smaller options from Amazon's Echo Dot and Google's Home Mini. And the HomePod has really not been a huge success. I never covered that on my channel. Let me know in the comment section below if you want me to. But the HomePod has not really been a huge success for Apple and I don't really see it being a success even with a cheaper HomePod. I think the actual problem is the HomePod itself and Apple needs to add more meaningful features to that. It's been reviewed pretty natively by critics and it's gonna continue to be. Just because it's at a small, cheaper price point doesn't make the product any better, just makes it more affordable. Next, we have an iPad Pro with updated processors coming possibly in late 2019. They, Apple will probably do also an October event after the September keynote and that's when they usually release things like iPads and Mac Book Pros and iMacs and, MacBooks and things like that, so uh, I can definitely see an updated spec bump on the iPad Pros this year. We also have a MacBook slash MacBook Air, possible refreshes with new Apple custom chips or otherwise minor spec bumps. And this MacBook Pro 16 inch or 16.5 inch display is being rumored, uh, with, and this is supposed to be with a huge 
design, full design refresh. It's supposed to replace the current 15 inch version. So it's supposed to be like a nice hybrid between the 15 inch version and the, the now discontinued 17 inch version that Apple used to sell. They will also include a 32 gig RAM option, but honestly, this whole 16 inch MacBook Pro, even though it might happen at some point, I don't really see it happening this year. Apple's already got a lot on their plate and I can see this happening probably in 2020. I would love for it personally to come out on October keynote and Apple has surprised sometimes. For example, the iMac Pro, I didn't think they'd have it ready by October of 2017, but they did and that was awesome. So maybe they'll announce it in October and release it in December or something like that. But a full design refresh on the Mac Pro, Pro um, is definitely a welcome change. Um, even though the, design, the last design refresh was only about two and a half years ago, it's really good to, was only about three years ago. Um, it's really good to see uh, Apple continuing to push their products and not just letting the design refreshes take forever like they have with certain other products. I will definitely do a full video on this once more credible rumors slash leaks have slash details have been um, released on the internet, but there really isn't much to go off of right now. So those are the main products to look forward to this year. Um, and the I, I'd say the iPhones, the Apple Watch Series 5, the Mac Pro and possibly the, I guess the MacBook Pro 16 inch are probably the, the headline products and there's a lot of other stuff that Apple has to offer that sort of going to be releasing on the side but those are the main products and yeah it's a pretty stacked 2019. So now let's talk about 2020. So there's a lot of stuff coming in 2020 and I can see this being a big year for Apple. I know people say that about every year but I feel like Apple partly because 2020 is the start of a new decade they want to start of push uh, the innovation and they want to there's you know for example the 2020 iPhones will definitely include a lot of innovative features such as 5G capabilities a 3D rear camera no more LCD displays and definitely some sort of design refresh the iPhones this year aren't getting a major design refresh actually though I think the only noticeable difference will be the camera and maybe new colors hopefully but other than that nothing this year so maybe they'll shrink the bezels next year or something just something Apple. It's been almost two years since the last design refresh and you really gotta keep pushing it with the smartphones. Apple is also going to be releasing a new iPad Pro in 2020. And this has been actually leaked quite extensively, um, which is sort of surprising considering it's a device that's not gonna be out for a while. But I am really backlit, I did not realize this. Uh, so what happens when you film in front of a window? I wanted to get the view, but see, I'm really well lit if I do that, but go back here, I'm really badly lit. I don't have to light up the exposure and, and post. I apologize guys if I'm a little bit backlit, by the way. Um, I wanted to get a view of the back. I thought it was really cool. Anyway, the 2020 iPad Pro will include a 3D camera and it actually might debut on the 2020 iPad Pro first before it does on the iPhones. Although actually the October event will probably release the iPads which is after the September event which is when the iPhones come out. So it might be a little different. But anyway, there's that. Also the Apple Pencil, there's a rumored Gen 3 coming with lower latency and refreshed design. And also maybe smaller bezels on the iPad 2020. I can definitely see this being a real thing. In addition to spec bumps, the 2019 iPad Pro, if that actually happens, will just be minor spec bumps and internal upgrades. But the 2020 iPad should include some sort of design refresh. And design refreshes are honestly what make people most excited. So the iPads will get refreshed their design in 2020 and so are their iPhones. And also, there's a new product that might be coming out. AR smart glasses. So Apple has been working on this quietly on the side. I think pretty much ever since uh, Microsoft HoloLens became a really popular topic and basically they're augmented reality smart glasses. By the way, let me know if you want me to make a video on either this product or Microsoft HoloLens. I'm really fascinated by that too. But anyway, augmented reality smart glasses will basically run what's called ROS uh, or reality operating system and it's basically the inputs will be touchscreen, voice activation, head slash eye gestures, and it will contain many of the same features of the iPhone, such as maps, texting, calling, etc. And you know, that got me thinking, it could be the next replacement for iPhones. You know, smartphone innovation is slowing, 
and there's not really much else to improve on and there's got to be some new way to to interface and I don't think we're at the implant stage yet where we're gonna take a chip and put on our brains we are gonna get there at some point but I think right now the next move is something a little more personal glasses or contacts I can see that being really cool if they implement a contacts alternative I would definitely use that even a glasses one would be cool too next we also will have a Mac with an Apple made chip uh, it could be on an iMac, it could be on a MacBook Pro. I think it would be easier to do it for Apple on a MacBook Pro or MacBook Air or MacBook. Um, but either way, it's going to be implemented on some Macs. So this is finally Apple's move away from Intel chips onto their own custom-made Apple chips. And now the Apple Car that will not be coming in 2020. But I just wanted to address this because a lot of people have been wondering what happened to that product. Basically, uh, there's sort of been confusion on Apple's side whether they want to make an actual fully autonomous vehicle or if they just want to make uh, software for Tesla or something like that. And honestly, I think the verdict is that Apple is going to continue pushing to create an actual fully autonomous vehicle, which is good. I would really, really like to see that. And basically, that could take a while to build that. So Apple is definitely working on that and they're continuing to map uh, the streets and stuff like that for the Apple car and self-driving is definitely one of their top priorities for one of the features and I can see this taking quite some time um, and definitely into the 2020s so yeah that's that's not going to be coming out for a while but probably by 2030 so I'll be in my 20s when it comes out and I'll definitely review that by the way I might have a really cool video coming soon on a different car Stay tuned. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this, please make sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up on this video. Um, I pretty much tried to include every single Apple product you can uh, you can expect from now until the end of this year, until even next year down the road. There's a lot of cool stuff coming from Apple and I'm really glad I got to share it with you guys. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always, I'll see you on Thursday in the next video. It's gonna be a cool video, guys. Goodbye.